Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the second Sunday in Lent. Welcome to those who are joining us via YouTube and Facebook. We have entered into the season of Lent, a time when we examine our lives, individually and as a society, and we confess our sins, turning in repentance back to God. So I invite you to join me in our Lenten confession and forgiveness. And we begin in the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of his love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With the words of our confession and the words of our opening prayer in your hearts and minds, let's have our opening hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me.
The readings that are assigned for us today, and Peter, you, I know you brought your paper and pen, didn't you? No. Oh. <laughs> well, when you get home, just go back to the video and you'll get it then. Okay, the readings that are assigned for today are from Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. Psalm 91, verses 1 to 2 and 9 to 16. Romans 10, 8b to 13, and the gospel is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. I'm going to read two of those readings for you today. The first one I'm going to read is from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Holy Gospel, it comes to us from Luke chapter 4. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Then the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It's been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it's written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you won't strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So if you're following along on our daily online Lenten devotions, you'll recognize today's psalm immediately. It's a good psalm for Lent because as the author of our study points out, Lent is a journey that might take us to some difficult and awkward places in our outward journey of work, family life, church commitments, and other responsibilities, as well as our inner journey of moral struggles and spiritual questioning. So today's psalm is such a great inspiration to carry us through these 40 days. But it was a really bad psalm for the devil to try quoting in our gospel. Jesus would have been very familiar with these words and doubtless called on them for strength to help him through any number of tough times. Had the devil been thinking straight, 
he should have known he wouldn't get any traction with them. He hasn't managed to succeed with a direct assault on Jesus' sense or appetites, so he tries using scripture as his weapon of choice. Not the sharpest crayon in the box, Satan, right? Next time, don't take your own little piece of scripture, read a bit further, because the next part would have told you clearly we are going to trample the head of the serpent and crush the very devil himself. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Back to the gospel for today. At his baptism, Jesus hears the bottom line truth about his identity. He is God's son, precious and beloved but when the Spirit leads him into the wilderness, he has to face a series of powerful assaults on that truth. He has to learn how to recognize God's presence in a bleak and lonely wasteland. He has to trust that he can be beloved and at the same time be famished. He can be valued and at the same time, be vulnerable. He has to learn that God's care resides within a fragile vessel that can crack and shatter. To be beloved is not to ignore the other grimmer truth, the truth of dust and ashes. As we said on Wednesday night, we're all going to die, including Jesus. And so the devil offers Jesus three opportunities to walk away from this essential lesson. And I have to wonder if they might become an invitation for us too. It's one thing to trust God in retrospect, when our hardships are over. It's quite another to trust God in the moment, when the comforts and certainties we cling to burn to ash. And we know the three temptations he has to go through, right? The first one targets Jesus' hunger, the most basic of human necessities to survive. Turn these stones into bread, the devil commands. Take something that's not meant to be eaten and use it to satisfy your cravings. The second one attacks Jesus' ego. It'll all be yours, says the devil. Fame, recognition, power, a kingdom to end all kingdoms here and now, with Jesus the star lifted up and admired, applauded, and envied. Oh, he'll be lifted up all right, on a cross. His power will be the power of self-surrender for the sake of love. And the third temptation targets Jesus' vulnerability. As if he hasn't been kicked enough already while he's down, Satan has one more trick up his sleeve. God will command his angels concerning you to protect you, the devil promises Jesus. On their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. It's such a seductive lie because it targets our deepest fears about what it means to be human in a broken, dangerous world. We want so much to believe we can control our belovedness, that we can, we, we can get God to guarantee us swift and perfect rescues if we just believe hard enough. Three temptations, three invitations. What will we do with them? The gospel tells us Jesus doesn't choose to enter the wilderness. The Spirit leads him there. But here's the kicker. Jesus chooses to stay. 
He stays until the work of the wilderness is over. We don't always choose to enter the wilderness either. We don't volunteer for pain or loss or danger or terror. But the wilderness still happens, doesn't it? Whether it comes to us in the form of a hospital waiting room, a thorny relationship, a troubled child, a sudden death, or a crippling panic attack. Whether it's the threat of a worldwide pandemic or the threat of a worldwide war, the wilderness appears unbidden and unwelcome at our doorsteps. It insists on being in spite of our resistance. And sometimes, can we even bear to think about this, It's God's own spirit who drives us into the barren places among the wild beasts. Does that mean God wants bad things to happen to us? That he wants us to suffer? I don't think so. Does it mean God can rescue even the most painful periods of our lives if we choose to stay and pay attention? Perhaps. Does it mean our deserts can become holy even as they remain dangerous? Absolutely. If your circuits are full now, full to overwhelming, and you just can't stand the thought of of everything that's going on in the world and and in our lives, and now Lent has arrived, and it, it just seems like there's no good news or anything to look forward to anymore. I get it. I'm there too. But let's look back on the psalm Satan tried to use against Jesus. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say you won't be in dangerous places. It doesn't say you won't be faced with threatening situations. It doesn't say you won't find yourself in serious trouble from time to time. What it says is that God will protect you. You don't need to be afraid because God will be right there with you in the trouble and will rescue you. So what does this mean for us as we begin our Lenten journeys this year? Well, maybe it just means we get to follow Jesus into the desert once again. And in new and terrifying ways, we will look evil in the face and we will hear evil's voice. We will recognize its allure and confess its appeal. That is the work of Lent. This is the uncomfortable and awkward journey that is Lent. And maybe by doing so, together with our Lord, we will will come to know who we are and whose we are. Just like at his baptism, we too receive the bottom line truth. We are God's children, precious and beloved. May that be enough for our journey. And may God and all his angels surround us and give us strength to live within that truth. Let's listen to our hymn of the day on eagle's wings.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church and for our bishops, Susan and Michael, and congregations of faith everywhere. Sharpen its proclamation of the word so that your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for the nations of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia. We pray with all our hearts for peace. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who reside among us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in need. Rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. 
Command your angels concerning all who are sick or in any need, especially Ron, Tammy, Pastor Christine, Maria, Earl, Jerry, Laverne, and all those we name in our hearts. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. We pray for all who continue to sacrifice daily for all of us during this pandemic. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for this congregation. Bless those who help prepare this place for worship. Strengthen those who are still homebound and not able to join us yet. Unite the voices of those who share this table to willingly and abundantly announce your grace beyond these walls. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to get ready now for Holy Communion. And uh, just a reminder, because for some of you that weren't here on Wednesday, you may have forgotten how we're going to do this. If you would uh, wait for the ushers to come up and direct you, keep a distance between each other. When you come forward, uh, there is bread and wine. You, can, you only have to take one. If you don't want to have both elements, that's okay. Um, when you take them, go to the side stations. At that place, you will remove your mask, consume the elements, return your mask to the position, and carry on to your seats. And in that way, it seems people are feeling comfortable with that. And I will home deliver as well to those that might not be able to make it up. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn as we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet where all are welcome. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanks and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here today together. Please make sure that you keep your masks on the proper position over the nose, under the chin, until you get outside. As we leave today, remember that you are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, majestic and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. These, I don't know what's wrong, but these are such troubling times, and everything in our readings and prayers today indicates that there are forces out there that need to be battled. And guess what we're going to do today? For the first time in over two years, we are going to sing together, okay? Can you guys, do you remember how to sing? And we are, yes, amen to that. And we are going to sing together that hymn that reminds us that we are not alone in this battle. A mighty fortress is our God, number 229 in your green books. And you know, I would highly recommend you stand up for this one and sing it. Leave your masks on, though, please.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.